that they might touch the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Please be seated. Many realities of life are healing realities. For example, a laughter is the best medicine. Music has charms to soothe the savage breast. Things that are medicinal and things that soothe, even everyday things, are healing opportunities for all of us. And nature itself is a therapeutic presence that surrounds our lives. Then in addition to laughter and music and nature, we have friends and family, reading and learning, work and leisure, worship and liturgy, confession and forgiveness. All of these God-ordained rituals of life are healing for us. These involve body, mind, and spirit. These cover all five of the senses, sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. These are the very accessible realities of life that communicate to us that our God is a healing God and that the universe itself is a place for healing. I visited friends who had a home that was situated alongside the ocean in Carpinteria. And I had long been aware that the ocean was a place for healing. And furthermore, that you could access that healing without getting your feet wet. As near as I could tell, the couple who owned this property never went in the water. You could pay top dollar for beach real estate, never go in the water, and still reap the benefits of the ocean's healing presence in your life. But this particular oceanfront property taught me an even more profound truth. There was a large sand dune that separated this house from the ocean. You couldn't even see the ocean from their home. I learned that even if you don't touch the water, even if you can't see the water, if you can just hear the ritual crashing of the waves and taste and smell the ocean air, you can get your money's worth. The crashing of the waves upon the sand is the divine grace of God that gives us a healing respite, a reminder that order in the midst of our chaotic lives can take place. Through each of our five senses, we have our antenna out for healing. And there is much in our environment that satisfies our quest. Recall how many things in this brief passage from Mark's Gospel have to do with healing. Jesus invites the disciples to get into a boat, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves, and rest a while. What a prescription for healing. Getting in a boat and getting away from civilization for a spell can be therapeutic, and being by yourself can be healing, and rest can certainly be restorative. And Jesus had compassion for the crowd because they were sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. We realize that the compassion of Christ can heal our wounds, and bear our sorrows. And learning from Christ can give us a new perspective on life and heal the old approaches that have outlived their usefulness. 
and they begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Jesus himself is our source for health and welfare. But this passage from Mark is not overly optimistic in its presentation of the healing opportunities. Some threats to healing are also mentioned, things that get in the way of our desire to be healed. For example, Mark reports that many in the crowd were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. If your life is defined by coming and going without any consideration for where you are coming from and where you are going to, you are just coming and going without intention or destination, then you are not a candidate for healing. If your life is so busy that you don't have time to sit down and eat, you are not allowing the healing provisions of the universe to nurture you to good health. And Mark further says, many saw the disciples and Jesus going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. The last thing we want when we go to a deserted place to rest a while is to be recognized. Occasional anonymity is conducive to healing. When people hurry and rush about, they are not allowing for the possibility of healing. When people are intent on arriving first, their view of life as a competition, as in, I arrive first, does not help the healing process. Yet even in the intense environment that Mark describes in his gospel, those who begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak are healed by Jesus. He finds a way to heal us despite the obstacles we place in the path, despite our being like sheep without a shepherd. Remember that movie, What About Bob? When Richard Dreyfuss, the psychiatrist, tries to flee with his family from his patient, Bill Murray, in order to rest a while, and shortly after he arrives at his vacation hideaway, Dreyfus discovers to his dismay that Bill Murray is also there to recognize him and to greet him with his incessant begging demands for emotional healing. Remember the two words that Dreyfus prescribes to Bill Murray? The two words are baby steps. Remember, Bob, baby steps. Slow down, relax, get some rest, quit your whining, put one foot in front of the other, and begin the process of healing. For the past few years, I have become a practitioner of baby steps in my own approach to healing. To rush into healing is counterintuitive. Healing is a lifelong process that begins at our birth and continues until it reaches its bittersweet climax at our death. We ought to see the entire context of life as God's reaching out to us to encourage us to comfort and to heal. When grief on occasion overwhelms us, when addiction interrupts the flow of divine energy, when sickness or disability or natural disaster sets us back, 
when death itself intervenes, we may view these as detours on our upward path to health and salvation. I have become more conscious in recent weeks that healing is a wonderful fulfillment of life. We literally begin with baby steps, and if we are fortunate enough to live to old age, we conclude our earthly pilgrimage with baby steps. I hope this Church of our Savior has become for you, as it is for me, a place of healing and a base camp for our healing efforts to a needy world at our doorstep. And touch is an important part of healing. That is why we greet each other with a hug or a handshake. That is why we touch and taste the bread and the wine. The touch of intimacy gives birth to our children. The touch and taste of bread and wine gives birth to our faith. Touch is all around us, yet it needs to be conscious in order to be powerful. When we touch with a prayer, when we touch with yearning, when we touch with compassion, we heal both ourselves and the other. We touch the earth. We enter into the harmony of the universe. We touch the face of God. We are healed. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. This is the real stuff of healing, above all else. To accept Jesus as our good shepherd and to learn the ways of God upon this earth is our lifelong fulfillment. Our good health is our destiny. If we reach out and touch even the fringe of his garment. Amen.